Great! We learned a few things about what version control does and why it's helpful by trying to live without it. Now let's take a closer look at how it all works. We call it a version control system because it helps you control all the different versions of what you're working on, whether that's older versions, like our cowboy coder learned, or, as we'll discover later, even different versions that you're working on at the same time. You'll sometimes hear the terms revision control or source control instead of version control. These are all interchangeable terms and don't mean anything different. We just chose to use version control for this lesson because we think it makes its purpose a little clearer. So what does version control actually look like? The Cowboy Coder's project file ended up looking like this. A lot of individual copies of his project as he and his new partner made changes. In version control terminology, we'd call this a repository. It's a collection of all the versions of this particular project along with some special information. What order did the changes occur in? A description of each change? And even some other info, like who was responsible for each change? Each project should have its own repository. Back in our manual system, how did the cowboy coder decide when to create a new version of his code? He had to make that call himself based on when he thought his change was complete. Some tasks can be rather complicated and require a day or two, or even longer, to finish. It wouldn't make sense for us to treat unfinished work as a version. Version control systems work in much the same way. They don't automatically keep track of your versions. You have to explicitly tell them when a version is finished so that it will track them for you. The act of telling your VCS that a version is finished is called committing. Much like you would commit something to memory, you also commit changes into your repository. Because of this, versions are often referred to as commits. Doing this manually is kind of messy, though, as you can see by looking at our diagram. When you use a proper version control system, it tries to hide this complexity from you. So most of the time that you interact with your project, it looks just like it did before. It accomplishes this by storing all of this data in special folders that are often flagged as hidden to your computer so that you won't even know it's there until you need to interact with it. But if your commits are stored in the repository, and the repository is tucked away in hidden files and folders, how will you explore your changes? That's the third major functionality that a version control system will provide. It gives you a set of tools to review your project history. Often, this means providing you with the ability to view and filter the full list of commits, or even switch what version your project folder is currently displaying. Want to go take a look at what your project looked like this time last week, last month, last year? Your version control system will let you do all of those things and more, often with just one command. So those are the basics. Each project you have under version control will have a repository, which is a collection of commits describing the changes to your project as you work. The version control system will also provide you with a set of tools you can use to browse your project history. That's not all that version control system does, obviously. Most version control systems provide a way for you to share your repository with others so that you can collaborate on projects and keep track of each other's changes. They also typically provide a lot of advanced features intended to help you work on really complicated projects. When you have several participants in a project with several concurrent tasks and hundreds of files, you're going to have a lot of commits flying around. That can be really tough to manage sometimes without specialized tools. We'll talk about some of these more advanced features later, after we learn how to work with the basics. For now, though, there's one more question we have to answer. We know what version control is, and we know it's helpful. I've also implied that there are several different version control systems out there. Which one should we use? Is there one that's better than the rest? You probably know from the title of this course that we're going to recommend using the Git version control system, but why? In the next video, we'll take a quick look at Git and explain why it's one of the best version control systems available today.